Would you stand with us this evening? a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide where all the love I never found comes like a flood flowing At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. thankful tonight thank you Jesus Thrones, 
above all wonders the world has ever known above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what your word crucified laid behind a stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all of all powers above all kings above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones above all wonders the world has ever known above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what your love crucified laid behind a stone lived to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me Rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground the fall the thought of me above all thank you Lord And straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answereth thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now it was Pilate's custom at the feast to release to the people a prisoner of their choosing. And the man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd went up and began asking Pilate to keep his custom. Do you want me to release to you the king of Jews? Pilate asked, for he knew it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. So Pilate asked them again, what then do you want me to do 
with the one you call the king of Jews. And they shouted back, Crucify him. Why, asked Pilate, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. And wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. And the soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and the whole company, and the whole company together. They dressed him in a purple robe, twisted together a crown of thorns, and set it on his head. And they began to salute him, Hail the King of the Jews. They kept striking his head with a staff and spitting on him. And they knelt him down and bowed before him. After they had mocked him and removed the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him, then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him uh, among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, this man truly was the son of God. You may be seated. They grab his arms as they tightly strap each wrist. With a hellish look stood a strong armed soldier, whip clenched in his fist. Laced with chips of bone, they beat him hard from his shoulders to his feet. It sliced right through his olive skin, just like razors through a sheep. Countless times the blood splattered as each inhuman lash was given. Several times, his knees gave way as his flesh just hung like ribbons. Then surprisingly, he turned his head. Though the words he used were few, the soldier's face turned pale when he said, This blood is for you. Uncaringly, they tossed the garment 
across his weakened form and his blood pressure fell deathly low as the crowds began to walk. They forced him to carry his cross uphill while his face they punched and smacked while the splinters from the crisscross beam dug deep into his back. Through lack of sleep and dehydration, his tongue began to swell and weaken by his loss of blood, this prophet teacher fell. When he did, some blood splat on a man named Simon's shoe. And when he went to wipe it off, the prophet looked and said, Simon, this blood is for you. This blood can save the soul, heal the sick, mend the heart. This blood can give you access to the very throne of God And it still can go the distance through the pain to where you are This blood is for you The blood of the Lamb And they pounded a spike through the bones in his wrist bursting arteries and veins. And as they dropped the cross in the hole they dug, his body, it convulsed with pain through an agony and torment that never a soul shall find. He tilts his face toward heaven with full control of his mind, with more love than any human heard before that time or since. He made a statement that to this day makes the strongest skeptic wince. He cried, Father God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he gave his life for those lost in sin, he was saying, this blood is for you. And this blood can save the soul, heal the sick, mend the heart. This blood can give you access to the very throne of God And it still can go the distance through the pain to where you are This blood is for you If you're lost and alone and your mind is connected This blood is for you If you feel like you've been hurt and abused This blood is for you The atoning cleansing blood of the Lamb. This blood can save the soul, heal the sick, mend the heart. This blood can give you access to the very throne of God. And it still can go the distance through the pain to where you are. This blood is 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you right now. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, we say thank you. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, oh Lord. Oh God, we say thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. We as a church have been talking our last few times together about the week changed the world and tonight we remember all that Jesus went through all that he endured all that he did for you and for me on Friday of that week on Friday of that week and we remember how the horror the devastation of that day was not only a fulfillment of God's promise to his people, but it was a demonstration of God's love for his people. And that's why we call it Good Friday. Good Friday. No, it's not called Joyful Friday or Happy Friday or Jubilant Friday. For as the prophet said, his appearance was disfigured beyond that of any man. And his form was marred beyond human likeness. Instead, church history has spoken of this day as Good Friday. For at the cross of Jesus, God himself paid the awful price for your sin and mine and what he did was good. It was very good. The Apostle Peter put it this way. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And then quoting from the prophet Isaiah, he says, but by his stripes, his wounds, his bruises, you have been healed. You've been healed. You see, Jesus was perfectly fulfilling God's law by not only living according to that law, but by dying according to that law. For over a thousand years earlier, God commanded his people to offer a sacrifice, a male lamb, listen, without defect or blemish. 
And they were to take the blood of that lamb and place it on the sides and on the tops of the door frames of their homes. And God promised that although he would strike down in judgment the firstborn son of those who oppressed his people and served the counterfeit gods in the land, God said, but when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over you. And that's exactly what he did for his people on what became the feast of Passover. And now, fast forward with me. Here was the spotless, the sinless Lamb of God, Jesus of Nazareth, whom the Apostle John wrote about describing the Word of God who became flesh, giving his life, shedding his blood on of all the appointed times, the, the Moedim, the appointed feasts of God's people, on the very feast of Passover. On the Passover. It's no wonder that the Apostle Paul, a religious Jew who came to trust in Jesus as his Messiah, his Savior and Lord, would write to the church saying, for Christ, or Messiah, our Passover has been sacrificed. Our Passover lamb. You see, God's word is clear. Jesus' blood makes all the difference. Can you say, thank you, Jesus? It makes all the difference. Paul wrote, in him we have redemption through his what? Blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And John wrote, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the what? The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies or cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Listen, for anybody out there who has ever wondered if you are loved, Know tonight that God has already proven it at the cross of Jesus. That perfect intersection of God's mercy and God's justice. God's already proven it. Anybody who has wondered whether or not you're valuable, you're valuable to God himself, the creator of the ends of the earth, look no further than the cross of Jesus, than the shed blood of the Son of God, the King of heaven who gave his life for you and me. You wonder whether or not you're worth it. God proved it at the cross of his Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. John wrote, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as what? An atoning sacrifice for our sins. No, it wasn't a pretty Friday or a lovely Friday, but because God's son shed his blood for you and me, it was and it is a good Friday. Can you say amen? amen. But I pray tonight you would hear me. I pray for any of you within the sound of my voice, whether here in person or even joining us on live, online tonight, that you would hear me because as much as we celebrate and stand in awe of a God who loved you and me so, that he would send his son into the world to pay the price for our sin and demonstrate that, demonstrate that love at the cross. If there's anything that our passage that was read earlier tonight by these men of valor from Mark 15, it, if there's anything it shows us, it's that you and I have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. And just like Pilate, the Roman governor or procurator faced, just like the religious crowd faced, just like the soldiers faced, just like the criminals who were crucified beside him faced, the question is, what will you do with this king who willingly and lovingly laid down his life and shed his blood for you? You see, you can try to push it off. You can try to push him off or push him away or somehow push off the decision. But as Pilate found out, ultimately, you must choose. You must choose. The fact of the billions of people on planet Earth there are really two types of people. Those who have chosen to bow their hearts and their knees to the lordship of King Jesus and those who haven't. Those who have embraced this son of God, this one who shed his blood out of love for you and me and those who haven't. 
Which one are you tonight? Which one are you? Because God's word is clear that one day every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One day. So now is the time, as the Bible says, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Just a moment as we sing this song of worship to the Lord, giving him thanks for all he's done and his goodness his goodness in our lives and at the cross of Jesus. I pray that if you need to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus tonight, if you need to bow your heart and your knee to him tonight and embrace him as your own, I pray that as we worship, you would tell him. You would worship him. You would give him your everything. Would you worship with me together? Thank you. Feel free to stand if you'd like, or remain seated if you'd like. Would you take this time to bow your heart before him? Give him your all. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy. That bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so so good to me. Behold the cross, age to age, and hour by hour. The dead are the work of your power so we sing god you're so good so good god you're so good god you're so good you're so And should this life 
bring suffering Lord I will remember what Calvary has bought for me both now and forever is God your so Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being such a good, good father, such a good, good God. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, O oh God. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, O oh God. We thank you, thank Lord. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise your name, O oh God. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll ask you to stand with me together if you're able to. It was about 24 hours earlier on Thursday night that Jesus sat down with his disciples to partake of that Passover feast. But that night he gave new significance meaning to the items being served. So as we begin to enter into a time of celebrating the Lord's Supper together, number one, if you have not been served and you would like to be served. You still need the cup which contains both the juice and the bread. Please just lift up your hand and one of our servers will, will get to you quickly.
I want to be clear that you don't need to be a member of Faith Assembly of God to partake with us tonight. But you do want to know that you are a member of God's family through Jesus. And even as I've encouraged and challenged you over our last several moments together, that you have embraced Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, that this King of Heaven is the King of your life. If not, if you've not done so, then it's okay. You can let this time pass you. I would encourage parents, if you have a small child with you and he or she has not yet made that decision to follow Jesus, they don't quite understand that yet, um, give them something else to snack on tonight. But I would encourage you most certainly, use it as a time to instruct them and to teach them the meaning of what this is. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church saying, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. With that in mind, as you hold the bread tonight, whether here in this room or wherever you are joining with us, I pray that we could pause for a time of confession before the Lord. Dedication and maybe rededication of our lives to the Lord Jesus. Would you pause with me for a time of confession before him? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. We confess our sins before you tonight, Lord. Sins of fear, of worry, of lust, of anger. Sins of the flesh. Sins of selfishness tonight of placing other gods before you. Forgive us our sins. Your word promises, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for your shed blood by which we have forgiveness of sins. Thank you for your bruised and beaten body. As you hold the bread tonight, would you pray a prayer with me, something like this. Lord Jesus, as I eat this bread, I remember that you, the bread of life, took on flesh and gave yourself out of love for me. Tonight I receive you in my life by faith, and I give my life to you. By your wounds, I am healed. I am restored to Almighty God. Amen. Let us partake of the bread. Paul wrote, saying, in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant.
covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as you hold the cup, would you pray with me, saying, Lord Jesus, as I drink this cup, I remember the cup you drank for me, the cup of your Father's wrath. And I remember how your blood was poured out so that I could be forgiven, freed by faith. I receive your forgiveness tonight. Because of you, my conscience is cleared, my past is wiped clean, and I am a child of God. Amen. Let us partake of the cup. Paul wrote, saying, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. As we worship the Lord tonight in song, if you need prayer, I'm just going to invite you to begin to come at this time, whatever your need might be. But tonight, let us proclaim that Jesus, he paid it all. The work is finished. It's accomplished. Paid in full for you and me. Through his shed blood, we have access to the throne of grace tonight. And whatever your need might be, know that his throne is sufficient to meet every, every need. Would you come tonight, whatever your need might be? Come and find a place of a prayer. Come if you need others to pray with you. Yes. 
tonight, oh God, in that Syracuse Youth Convention, oh God. Let it be so, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, touch. God, minister by your healing power, oh God. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you that we have access tonight, oh God, that nothing, oh God, is too great for you, oh God. That, Lord God, no need, oh God, is too small or too great, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the gate for us through your shed blood. Thank you, Jesus. We call upon you tonight, oh God. Every need, oh God. Every need, oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, oh God. Touch Yvette Rivera tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Listen, you didn't simply come to church tonight. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are the church. Amen. We've got an exciting weekend, as dark and as horrific as Friday was. We dare not forget what our Savior did for us. This is a great weekend to let others know Jesus paid for all. God loves you so much. Jesus, he paid it all. This place will remain open for just several minutes. If any of you want to come and spend time just praying, worshiping, 
The team in the back will put on some worship music and feel free to do so. Otherwise, God bless you. The Lord be with you. Look forward, look forward to gathering with you this coming Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, for our 11 a.m. worship service. Be sure to get here a little early. To be sure that you can find a parking spot and a place to sit and uh, invite somebody to come. Invite somebody. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Amen.